Looks like we got ourselves a trout. A little snooky. Look at that tail on there. That is awesome. Hey, it's Luke with Salt Strong fishing down in Marco Island. Insider Club member Joe Hammond out here, and we are going to see if we can get some wintertime fish. I got here super late. It's about uh, nine o'clock when we left. What we're doing is we're looking for some deep pockets of water. The, the weather has been cold, and we're going to be using a variety of lures. My number one choice is going to be this Power Prawn USA Junior on the Weedless Hoss football jig. So we'll see how that goes. We'll uh, make, you know, might have to make some changes over the, throughout the day, but we'll keep you posted. Hopefully we'll catch some big ones. So here's the tide chart for the day. And I absolutely love fishing situations like this where there's a really low tide. It keeps all the fish away from the trees and then starts going up. But I got there late. And so we ended up fishing later in the day. That being said, it was still productive. We used the 90-10 recipe to find the fish. This was the first spot that we targeted, a deep spot. Bounce these power prawns along the bottom, and here's the first catch. Oh, oh, there's a decent fish. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, looks like we got ourselves a trout. Yeah. Sweet. Didn't take long. Nice one. Nice. Yeah, just slow bouncing the power prawn and just barely, barely tapped it. Oh, cool. So we're basically bouncing jigs along the bottom and we're just kind of going from deep pocket to deep pocket and here joe had a crazy catch that is the smallest sheep's head i've ever seen caught that is amazing because that's that's a whopper right that there. is amazing look at that spot one was okay it just wasn't as active as we hoped so we went ahead and moved after about 15 20 minutes to spot number two which was similar a little bit further than back country a little bit deeper and proved to be a good decision oh fish on Looks like a trout. Jet ski and a trout, and sweet. <laughs> right in the hole where it was supposed to be. Good call on doing this point. This gets down to about 14 feet of water. I think there's a bunch of them down there. Oh, there we are. Got them. Yeah, as you upgraded from the sheep's at all. To a nine inch trout. <laughs> another, another trout. Oh, there we are. Oh, that's our snook. Nice work there, Joe, on the board with the snook. Nice work. A little snooky. Very nice. Oh, he's been rubbing. Look at the tail. Oh, yeah, check out that tail. Wow. So we kept pushing up this shoreline. It was all nice and deep with structure and some current flow going through. The ladyfish were all over the place, and we were getting mostly ladyfish and some trout. But I did a, a, a change to the retrieve that seemed to have all trout and no ladyfish. Yeah, for that trout, I was actually just like slow crawling on the bottom. The goal is just to try to get under the under the ladyfish. See if it works again. So notice the rod is hardly moving on. I'm just doing a slow retrieve, and here goes the next one. Got him. <laughs> Done. This slow crawl might be the new thing. Another trout. They're getting bigger. Literally like zero rod tip moving at moving at all. And then you feel boom. All right, solid trout. So at this point, I'm super intrigued and I keep trying this drag method to see if I could catch ladies and there were no ladies, all trout. Got him. <laughs> Telling you, another trout under the ladyfish. That's hilarious. Oh, quick release. Yeah, it's literally just crawling this, this Power Prawn USA weedless down there. Oh, you're on. I'm on. Sweet, what do we have? Oh, the old lady. <laughs> oh, the old lady fish, Chris. All right, so after a lot of trout and ladyfish action, we decided, okay, let's get a redfish. We wanted to lock in the slam. And so we went to a nearby cove. The, the sun was starting to come out. It was getting warm. And we saw a bird along the shoreline, and it started looking better and better. Oh, mullet jump. All right, I'm feeling real calm about this. this is, now it has all the ingredients. Calm zone, shallow flat near deep water, mullet jumping interface, and some birds. This was a nice shallow bay with mud bottom. It was about two feet of water, so we switched from the jig heads to weighted hooks. I was using the mulligan, and here I got a nice cast under this mangrove, and fish on. Got him. Nice. nice. I was about to say that cast deserved one. Oh, there's a the red. Nice looking red. Couldn't help but to smack that lure as it was dragged by. Look at that tail on there, that is awesome. All right, so I'm back from the trip. It was an absolute blast. I just absolutely love going down to 10,000 miles. Such a fun fishery. So I want to talk about a few things. First of all, the two core lessons. There were two core lessons that were basically realized and shown in this trip. 
And then at the end, we'll talk about the tackle used. I always get a lot of questions, so I like to go through it in detail. I'll do that at the very end. So as far as lesson number one, it's really about the 90-10 recipe. And it's just the power of the recipe to, to find fish. So we basically just follow the recipe. This is that proven recipe that we've, uh, that we've explained. We teach it to insiders, and we now have a new survey for it. But it basically helps make sure that we're putting ourselves in the right spot at the right time. And we just followed it, and we caught a slam in under two hours. So I went through the footage from the first cast to the, to the redfish, you know, trout, snook, redfish. That was two hour time frame, so pretty cool. I hadn't fished on there in many years, and, and Joe doesn't really fish that area all that often, so we, we had a great time. We had a lot of action, and obviously we caught a ton of trout that I didn't show in the footage. So that 90-10 recipe is very powerful, and you, if you haven't yet done so, make sure to take the survey. It's free of charge. To find it, to go to saltstrong.com forward slash recipe, and I'll put a link down below for it as well. Again, really, really helpful, and I highly, highly recommend giving it a shot. If you struggle during the winter months, make sure to follow the recipe because that's going to lead you to the fish. So lesson number two is that trout retrieve. That was the coolest thing ever where uh, I was using this lure and instead of bouncing it, usually when I'm fishing deep water like that, we're fishing, you know, 10 feet and more and they're basically right on the shelf, right on the, the shelf. And so I'm usually jigging it up and down. And that jigging seems to attract the attention of ladyfish Whereas just dragging on the on the bottom, that seemed to really excite the trout, and it didn't appeal to the to the ladyfish. So it was like the perfect combo. Once I started doing that, I caught zero ladyfish, and I caught all trout afterwards. Whereas before, it was just getting just getting wrecked by ladyfish like every single cast. So really really cool. So uh, as for tackle, let's go through it, and we'll talk about the most important down to the least important. For those of us using lures, the rod is the most important tool by far. This is your basically your fingers, right? You can this is how you feel everything. This is the feel of strikes setting the hook, getting the fish to the boat, this rod is, is crucial. And so always recommend spending most of your budget on the rod. In this case, I was using the slot machine. This is a custom rod that we've, uh, that we've built. This thing's awesome, it's seven foot six inches, a medium power rod, fast action tip, and it's just a, a great blend of, of, of delivering light lures, feeling even the lightest of strikes, while having the backbone to handle even big fish. And next I'll talk about the lure, because this is, again, this is crucial to get a, a good lure, but most importantly, to get the proper depth coverage during the winter, especially when it's cold, like it was during this trip. This is a little bit after a cold front. Getting on the bottom is crucial. Those fish are gonna be holding on the bottom. The deeper, the better, ideally deep bottom with structure. If you're fishing an area that has 10 feet of water and those fish are holding on the bottom, which is almost always gonna be the case, and your lure is even at eight feet of water where you're not on the bottom, in many cases, those fish aren't going to swim up to, to, to strike that lure. You need to be right down there in their face. And so make sure, whatever lure you're throwing, make sure there's enough weight on it so it gets down on the bottom. The reason why I like this combination in particular so much is because I can get down there deep. This is the Power Prawn USA rigged on the, uh, the Haas Weedless football jig. So now I can get this small profile lure that looks realistic. I can get it down there to the bottom near the structure without getting snagged. So this, this by far has been my favorite for, again, for fishing this, uh, this season, especially when they're holding deep. And then toward the end of the day, like, uh, like this trip in particular, the fish started showing up shallow, right? The sun was coming out. Now the shallow waters are starting to warm. And that's when we moved up shallow and got that redfish to, to finalize the slam. And so for that, I switched over to a weighted hook so I can cover the shallow water. And I went to this paddle tail. This is the new mulligan paddle tail. It skips incredibly well. So I like throwing this up under the mangroves. It skips nice, has good realistic motion. That was really it. I just used two lures, um, this basically simple setup and light line as well as far as the line. I, had, I actually had two setups that day. Number one, I was using a 10 pound braid. This is the Daiwa J braid, uh, eight grand. Uh, I love this line, it's, it casts well and it's strong. And I matched it with a 30 pound mono leader. Down there, the water's pretty murky and there's a lot of current flow. So it's not like Tampa Bay where I have to be like really, really light leader. So just for when those big, big snook hit. I typically use 30 pound leader uh, down, in, uh, down in that area. And then the other rod, in case we got us a bigger fish, was a prototype that we're making that is for 20 pound line. It's just a, a more powerful rod that is, again, for the bigger fish. So I use this most of the time. This is the, the slot machine, 10 pound braid, uh, 2500 size reel. And this reel in particular is the BGMQ. So that's it for the tackle. Any questions at all about this, uh, this tackle or this trip, you leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're an Insider Club member, you can see the post-trip analysis and the link down below where you can see where we were and get some tips on really dialing in those 90-10 zones. And if you're not a member, make sure to take that 90-10 survey, right? It's totally free of charge. It takes about 20 seconds to do the survey. And at the end, you'll get a customized 90-10 recipe for whichever area you're fishing. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again soon.